How's it going, everybody? Burn Alvarez and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is March 18, 2024. Figure 4 online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. we got a lot of news to get into here today. Yesterday, Sunday, Steve Austin Day, 316, St. Patrick's Day as well. And celebrating St. Patrick's Day was Becky Lynch, who, in fact, was at the White House. Hmm. She was at the White House yesterday. Met with uh, Joe Biden. Her book is now in the presidential library. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Going from the White House on Sunday to wrestling Nia Jax on Monday. How many people can say they've done that in their lifetime? Nobody. Nobody ever, and they never will again. Probably not. So that's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she was there, and uh, as noted, tonight is Raw, and we've got the... Becky Lynch, Nia Jax match, last woman standing. So I'm sure Becky gets the win there to uh, head into WrestleMania. We've got a tag team title ladder match qualifier, New Day versus Alpha Academy, and also DIY versus The Creeds, which is an interesting match because uh, they're going into a ladder match, and one would think the... The DIY would be the favorites, but don't you remember those NXT ladder matches that they had the Creeds do and they did all that crazy stuff and Brutus mm-hmm. bombs off the ladder and everything? Mm-hmm. I think they could win. And also- It's possible. It's possible. That one can go either way. But but if you watch the TV, you know, DIY did just get laid out by, um, you know, by um, Judgment Day, so they're kind of in that program. So they are more likely to win of the two. And then we got R-Truth and The Miz versus Indu Sheer. Yeah, show R-Truth up like Miz. once every four months or whatever. Yeah, our truth in the Miz should win that because they're in the program too, and they were also pulled from that uh, uh, intercontinental program to go into this one. So, you know, it's probably um, you know, and our truth's really over. So they think they got they have to give him a role at WrestleMania. Then we've got the NXT show on Tuesday, which has Roxanne Perez and Tatum Paxley. One of the members of the No Quarter Catch crew will defend the Heritage Cup against Riley Osborne. So, so there, so there, any one of them is allowed to defend the title. There, there are catch crew rules for every single match. It can be anybody, apparently. So, yes, it can be any one of them defending against Riley Osborne. Okay, that's that's ludicrous. And then any two of them will be facing Axiom and Nathan Frazier in a tag team title number one contenders match qualifier. Okay. The whole thing is ridiculous. Well, I don't mind it in the tag team, you know, like, uh, but, but as as a singles championship, it's kind of wa- kind of wacky. And also in a tag qualifier, it's Gallows and Anderson versus Hank and Tank. Well, we probably just figure that, that one. one out. Yeah. Yeah. So then Wednesday is interesting because there is no collision this coming week. It is it is preempted, and the Rampage show, which is normally on Friday. Is going to be taking place on Wednesday after Dynamite. So we actually have a three-hour block of AEW coming up on Wednesday. Dynamite followed by Rampage. we got another another three-hour block on April 13th, too. April 13th is the next one. Yeah. And this coming Wednesday, we've already got seven matches, seven matches and or segments announced, mm-hmm. which is uh, great this far in advance. We've got Christian versus Adam Copeland, I quit match for the TNT title. Yeah, they're... Um... They they may get six thousand people or more for the show. I don't it it probably won't sell out, but it's probably going to come close. So there, it's going to be two straight weeks with with for you know good houses, if nothing else. Um, and this match is probably the the main one and should be the main event of the show. I don't know that it will be, but it should go on last, um, especially since they're doing a three hour show. Um, so it should go last on as far as on the. Um, Dynamite show. Dynamite portion, yeah. Yeah. We have that. We have Eddie Kingston versus Okada for the Continental Championship. Only the one belt. We have... Yeah, yeah. We got that, and they're introducing the women's the women's TV title that's going to be, uh, what's it, Queen Aminata and That's Billy for Ring Starks. of Honor, though, right? Yeah, but still, it's Well, yeah, it's another belt. We do have another belt, but... Yeah, geez, it's just like, it's just... It's so funny that when they Well, not only the- that, Dave, but Eddie Kingston's defending the Continental title here, and, and I think he's defending the Ring of Honor title against, against Mark Briscoe. Briscoe. So yeah, that one's Mark- also probably going to be split off. 
So we're actually oh, going to have it is it is it is being split off, obviously. Yeah. So then somebody's going to have to win the uh, New Japan Strong title, unless Eddie just keeps that. But we basically we're adding three more belts here in the near yeah. future. Ridiculous, but there you go. We have Dion and Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm and Mariah May. Chris Jericho will face Hook, and an interview with Mercedes Monet. That's the dynamite portion of the show. And then for Rampage, we have Statlander and Willow Nightingale versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue. And, and Street Fight, street which fight. means which if you remember the women's street fights in AEW, they're pretty wild. Um, and well, that'll probably go on last. Pretty dangerous too. Sometimes. I mean, uh, the last time wasn't the last time that when the NJ got really hurt on on that table spot with Willow Nightingale. Oh, that's right. She missed the table. Yeah, she was hurt. Yeah, yeah. that was not good. And then we've also got a tag team championship tournament wild card match with the best friends versus Fletcher and Hobbs, which leads us, Dave, to your thoughts on this AEW tag team tournament. Um, I don't know. It's there. It's kind of weird. Um, I don't exactly. This is a bizarre set of brackets that we've got here. Yeah, well, it's 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 hard to like. I mean, it's like it feels like it's going to come down to Young Bucks and FTR. Um, I guess Hobbs and Fletcher maybe come out of it because they're they've been booked pretty strong, especially Hobbs. Um, cause obviously house of black is out of it. Um, we'll but yeah, it's, that later. it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. But, um, it's weird because I, I, I haven't really asked around. I mean, I've asked a little bit, but I don't have any answers as to why. Um, and I guess I should ask around more, but why, um, you know, DCC is not in it. A BCC team is in it, especially after they beat FTR at the pay-per-view. And I think like PAC and Penta, are probably not in it because what if they have to book something the day they get CMLL guys and then it's all screwed up. But it's weird because it's like if you had 10 teams in AEW, I just, I mean, some of those teams would be in the tournament, but it feels like, you know, a lot of the teams that should be in aren't in. Oh, like yes. A lot and, of them. And BCC I mean, is the most glaring example. They didn't just beat FTR. They beat him clean in the middle of the ring via double submission, basically, yeah. on pay-per-view. And they are nowhere to be seen in this in this tournament. Well, actually, you know, you know, again, it could make sense if they're saving them for... They don't want to beat them in the tournament, but they're saving them to be contenders. But it doesn't really make sense. Well, that doesn't make That's, sense that, in storyline why they're not in the tournament. No, no, no. It doesn't make... book. I mean, it, it makes booking sense, but it doesn't make legitimate... Um, Wins and losses matter sense at all. Um, but, um, you know, and then again, like, um, I don't know. I mean, like the infantry, which we'll talk about later. Um, it's like, you know, there's there's so many. Um, I mean, there's just other, you know, Bennett, like, uh, you know, I, I guess, if, you know, Bennett and Taven are probably the other ones that are that have been pushed pretty much as a team that that are not in it. I guess you could say, well, they're Ring of Honor champions, but. I don't know. That doesn't really make sense to me either, you know, why they wouldn't be going for the World Tag Team Championship of AEW. Um, but, you know, whatever. We'll see how the tournament goes. Um, it's not... It's like on paper, um, with all the talent they have in AEW, it, it felt... When I saw the bracket, it felt a little bit weak. All right. We've also got the uh, the New Japan Cup tournament, which is coming down to the wire here. Well, Final Four uh, and in the 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 semifinals, which are um, in just a couple of hours. Um, we got Sonata and Goto versus Evil and Suji. Yeah, I know a lot of people mad about Evil. Um, I haven't heard a lot of raves about the tournament, but there have been some really good tournament matches. Um, Jeff Cobb and Yota Suji, I heard, was good and. Um, you know, um, there's a couple of others in the last couple of days. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to start watching some of this stuff, but it's going to be tough. I, you know, the the match, the the DDT match with um, Takeshita and uh, Yuma Ayuyagi from today, I heard was was really exceptional, and um, so you know that's another thing. Um, that one and um, there's another, it's another big match. I think that oh the there's a couple of matches on the DDT show, which were the the All Japan and versus DDT matches. Yeah. 
So have you seen what have you seen from the New Japan Cup so far? I saw like what's the, been good and bad. Um, I mean, I saw a lot of the early stuff, but nothing. I mean, Ishii and Chase Owens and Yu Yu Imura and and, um, and uh, Shingo Takagi was good. Uh, I heard that Gabe Kidd and Shingo Takagi was really good, uh, which wouldn't doesn't surprise me at all. Um, Gabe Kidd who was re-signed with New Japan. Yeah, he's really good. Gabe Kidd, he's really good. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, got- so so the so those. Um, so let's see. So Sonata and Goto. It's weird because Sonata just lost to Naito twice. So I can't see him winning a tournament and getting another shot. So um, if you're looking at, like, Sushi should win, put it that way. Sushi, sushi should be the one who wins. Um, but I don't know that that's going to be the case. Um, you know, I mean, I think that there's a lot of, you know, thoughts that, that maybe that, you know, Narita would do real well. I mean, and, and Narita got some wins. Um, who was it that beat? Um, got it right here. Um yeah, Narita beat Zack Saber, so that is was a really big win. And then uh he lost to uh Suji, right? Is that what happened? Yeah. How'd Jack Perry do that you've seen so far? Um, I saw I didn't see I heard that that his match okay, so I saw the match with Shoda, which was good, but it had so much interference that it wasn't it kinda like the wrestling was good, but it kinda didn't feel good watching it. And then I heard that Jack Perry got the best match out of Yano that almost anyone could get. And then, um, who was he against next? Um, Sonata, which I haven't seen, the rematch from uh, Forbidden Door. Sonata beat him again. He got the best match of anybody out of Yano? Yeah. Everyone was talking about how, like, it was a really surprisingly good match. Wow. Yeah. All right. We also have Triple Mania coming up. Yeah, they're going to announce the Monterey Triple Mania. Well, there's three Triple Manias this year, but the Monterey Triple Mania card's probably going to be announced tomorrow. And um, Nick Nemeth is probably the biggest outside name. Um, you know, it's interesting because you know, uh, on Friday they announced that uh, Shayna Baszler was going to be at Bloodsport. And so right now it's it's really interesting because, like, um, there, I think that there's going to be um, AW people on blood sport um so there'll be aw and wwe people on the same show and there's people who have been trying to get aw people on their wrestlemania shows with no success and i know that there's going to be other companies looking to get wwe people because blood sport got shana and so it seems like they maybe opened the door um but we'll have to wait and see you know i mean it's it's just, uh, you know, I mean, some people are able to get them and some people aren't. It's basically how it's going to go. And then also the the stardom show is for the WrestleMania week is really interesting because, you know, that's going to be, you know, you're, you're going to know by who's on that card, who's staying, and, and by who's not on the card, probably who's going. All right. Well, we got to talk about WrestleMania and the SmackDown show from Friday night. And funny... They had a show a couple of weeks ago where Rock opened the show, and then they had a show last week where Rock closed the show, and the show where he closed the show did significantly better because more people stuck around to watch him at yeah. the end. Yeah. And so they followed up this week by having him open the show again. Mm-hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, they've got their TV deal signed. Well, I mean, here's the, th- the thing. Rock's going Rock's to do what Rock wants to do, and... You know, I mean, it's been kind of noted. I mean, the the thing, um, I don't want to say that it's like, you know, I'm not trying to say like people are mad or anything because it's The Rock, but but there's a complete double standard because there was actually a memo that went out from Nick Khan to all talent that, you know, this is a PG company, no swearing, not even in social media, obviously not on television, not in social media. There's certain words um, that are routinely used in... Um, on AEW television that are absolutely not allowed for any talent to use on um, SmackDown or or Raw for that matter, and Rock used 
<laughs> many of them on SmackDown and more of them, you know, even more stronger ones on social media. So it's kind of like, you know, they, you know, guys read a memo and then it's like Dwayne gets to do, but it's, it's, that's the deal. Dwayne gets to do what Dwayne wants to do because he's Dwayne. And, um, you know, I mean, and everyone accepts that they know that, but it is, it is kind of interesting that, uh, you know, I, I, I thought that, uh, his open of the show was, uh, pretty much like he just felt to me like so much bigger of a star than than everyone else are you kidding me it's, it's, this it's, guy is this guy is in another solar system it's did it's, you watch did you watch the one that he did in the gym which was the non-pg version of what he did at the beginning of of smackdown oh yeah oh my god what a great promo oh That's better. my god what a great promo yeah i yeah. love that every week we now get the PG, well, this is actually PG thirteen. I would well, say on well, the SmackDown. Well, the, the 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 SmackDown one. I mean, they they bleeped a lot of his stuff. They did. On, on, they on did. SmackDown. But so you, happened, you get the TV version on TV. But if you go on social media, you get basically the same promo, except you get the uncensored version of it. So so the They're deal so great. So the deal with the, the TV, what they have to do is 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 um, um, Fox gets the script ahead of time. So they know when to bleep. So because the whole thing, the the rock promo, obviously it's 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 completely scripted. But like if it was anyone else, they would just be not allowed to say it. But with the rock, it's like he can say whatever he wants, but we know what he's gonna say and when he's gonna say it. So it's not so anything that they want to bleep out, they will bleep out. So, but, and they know when to bleep it out because they're told ahead of time. So that's kind of the gist of, of the the promo and why certain things were bleeped out and everything like that. And, and they didn't miss on anything. I, the other thing I think is interesting is like, oh God, I mean, I'm glad I'm not going to like SmackDown or Raw tapings because everyone's going to be bringing signs now that they've told everyone that, you know, we're going to like you know, show the best signs on TV. So it's going to be like Sign City, which is kind of like, it's cool and it makes for a great atmosphere for television. Don't get me wrong. But when you're there live in the building and people are holding up signs and, you know, and, and blocking your view, that isn't so much fun. Well, this week's promo was interesting because The Rock was in Memphis and he noted that this was where he started his wrestling career. The, uh, every Saturday flea. morning, Channel the, 5, every Monday night, the Big Top Flea Market. Flex big, Cabana, was, I, he noted. I, th I, think, I think it was the Big One Flea Market. Well, one way or the other, this is where he started. And so he said, finally, The Rock had come back home. And he was a total baby total ba face. On total the show. baby face until until he was running down Cody. Then, well, there was there was the one period where he did get booed when he when he was trying to put over Roman Reigns. That was the only point. He was yeah. not booed for anything he said about Cody. But when he put over Roman Reigns, they did boo yeah. Roman Reigns. And uh, you know, this was I, I presume this is U.S. Canada type deal with Bret Hart. You know, out of this town, he's going to go full heel on everybody. But uh, he was he was a big time baby face here. And, oh yeah, uh, they were way more into him than yeah. Cody. But you know what? I mean, like he he could he could be like that in, in 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 any city if he wanted to be. Well, of course he could. But the point is, you don't want people after all this time to start booing Cody right before WrestleMania. Oh God, no! That is oh, the God, last thing that, that you want. Oh, would that be that would be that that would just ruin the entire atmosphere of the show. Yes. Um, but they're going to work heel and, and everything. And, 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 and again, they're going to put all the odds against Cody with everyone interfering in his match and everything. So I'm not too worried about the way the way that that match is going to be portrayed. Now, if it was Cody against The Rock, it'd be one thing that might be something to worry about. But Cody against Roman Reigns, nah. you know, the people, will you know, cheer him. But, yeah, he has to be cheered or else it just ruins everything in, in the nature of, you know, where they're going with this match. Yeah. So he did a rock concert, and he buried Cody. He buried Cody's mama. He buried Seth, and he buried the Cody crybabies at the end. These fans just ate this up. This guy was having the time of his life. And then he cut the promo, and this week the concentration was on Cody's mama. And he showed clips of Cody on Raw and Tears, saying he couldn't hand the belt to Dusty, but he sure as hell could hand it to his mother. Rock said, you responded by crying. You've got to be shitting me. That's how you responded? And he mocked Cody's tears, said Cody wasn't going to give anybody anything. And he says, I want to talk to your mama. He says, you don't know The Rock, but you're going to know me in ways you wish you hadn't. 
He said Cody took something from him. He was going to make Cody pay, the family pay, the mother pay. They were going to beat Cody and Seth. Night two was going to be bloodline rules. And that night, the only belt she was going to get was this belt. He takes out a big weight belt. He goes, I'm going to whip your son. This thing is going to be covered with flesh and blood. I'm going to whip him like a dog. And then when his blood is all over the belt, I'm going to hand it to your mother. And you're going to be crying like your son, but that's going to be okay. He whispers a song from Moana. He's going to say, you're welcome. And fans chanted his name. And God, this guy. This guy is just like, I don't know, man. We all need to enjoy it now while we can. Because he ain't going to be doing this forever. Or even much longer. Until next year when he's got to do it again to face The Rock. But goddamn, this was or something Roman else. Reigns. Roman Reigns, yes. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, incredible open to this show. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. It was. It was something. And that I, I actually like the promo on, on the other promo better. But oh, in the but, gym, it was miles yeah. better. But but this was very entertaining. You yes. know, with the singing and everything, and uh, yeah, it was really um, unbelievably fantastic stuff. Yeah. Then we had LWO versus Angel and Umberto in a tag tournament qualifier, and uh, so now, so so now they announced that the two winners of these matches. Are wrestling I, how, on Raw? Aren't the three winner, the three people, the three teams all going to the tournament? Fine, and going to the WrestleMania. Uh, I think that on Raw, the, and they announced all three of those winners are going. They're not are going. So, is there like two more matches next week on SmackDown? I believe that SmackDown does have two more matches next week. Okay, I didn't and, write them down, but uh, so they got the, the, the. They're doing a tournament. While Raw is just doing three matches, right? That appears to be what's going on, yes. Okay, that makes sense. I'll try and get the SmackDown lineup here in a second. But Angel and Umberto won. uh, Pop-up kick to the gut on Joaquin. So uh, they are moving on in the SmackDown mini-tournament version of this tournament to lead to people who get to go to WrestleMania. Got that? All right. L.A. Knight did a promo. And he said that this AJ, he flies all over the world to beat me up, but he can't even drive to Memphis. He said, you're the biggest Mark walking. And he says, if you can't show up here, I know somewhere you won't help but show up. And that is WrestleMania. It is AJ Styles LA night at Mania. He vowed to whip his ass, and then AJ attacks him from behind with a chair and says, I accept. You know, LA night is, is obviously very, very popular. But when he came out and did this promo, all I could think of is is like, Man, you're a freaking copy of The Rock, and not a. And after seeing the real one, it's like it's like when it's The been Rock obviously like, it's that's been obvious for a while. But now that The Rock is actually back, well, when Rock wasn't there, it was like he was great, and the people were going nuts, and they still were going, they still were reacting well to him. But it really felt, it just felt watching this LA Night promo to me completely different from a month ago or two months ago when rock wasn't around and he's doing this stuff and and he was like the hot thing and now it's like he's not the hot thing and you've got the real Dwayne Johnson doing the promo and then this guy's trying to do the same type of promo and it's like I mean and uh, you know again he's got a great delivery too but it just you just can't do it you can't do a rock promo right now um, without looking real second rate but he, you know, it's not like, I don't know. He doesn't have another speed. He's this, this you know, he's he's got his one promo style, and he ain't gonna change it. And I would say probably shouldn't change it. But it, but this is not a time where it stands out. We had Logan Paul meeting with Nick Aldis, wanting to know how Orton was gonna be punished for last week, and and uh, Nick Aldis clearly wasn't gonna do anything, and so. Nick goes, why don't you uh, go out there and request an apology for Morton in person? And Logan says, it's your job to make that happen. But he says, how can I expect you to do your job when you can't even find me an opponent for WrestleMania? And he walks off, which leads to an angle later. Kayla tries to interview Paul and uh, wants to know if Jimmy has a response to his brother's challenge. And Jimmy jumps back in frame and he accepts the match for WrestleMania. Says, you were always my little brother. I raised you. When we were kids, I used to tell you, I gotcha. And this year at WrestleMania, I gotcha. I mean, he's like, isn't like a minute older? Well, you know, he's still the bigger brother. He's yes. not even bigger. Yes. He's, just a minute, he's like a minute older. He's the older brother. It's a big brother. Okay. Technically, it's correct. Then we had Grayson Waller and Randy Orton. 
Logan Paul on commentary. And, uh, you know, they had uh, theory interfering here and there. And finally Orton runs them together, hits a draping DDT, goes for the RKO. Theory pulls Waller to safety. So Orton hits Theory with the draping DDT. Waller tries to roll in for the somersault stunner, but Orton hits him in mid-move with the RKO, pins him. Great finish to this match. And then Theory chop blocks Orton afterwards, calls Logan into the ring. Logan kisses Orton on the forehead. He wants to give him the uh, knockout punch, but the actual KO shows up. Comes down there to make the save. And they try to do a spot. And, uh, you know, sometimes like the last time that Orton did spots with Theory, it was awesome. This time it was Kevin's supposed to give him the stunner, and then he sells it by jumping into an RKO. Yeah. But they mistimed it a little bit. It didn't look great. He was probably kicking himself backstage. But he gets laid out. And then Nick Aldis comes out and he says, Logan, I wanted to follow up with what we talked about earlier. First off, did you get your apology from Randy? And second off, I've got your opponent. Actually, your opponents for WrestleMania. And it's going to be a three-way Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. Three-way for the title at Mania. Damage Control promo, they run this show. And then, apparently this had nothing to do with The Rock. I don't know what the hell happened. But Dragon Lee and Santos Escobar... They did two-minute match. <laughs> Dude, it's Dragon Lee and Santos Escobar. They got two minutes. Yeah. Just sucked. Dragon ran wild, and then... And it was over. He All jumps. The guy, everyone interferes, and then it's over. Yeah. So the heels are beating him down. Carlito runs down. He gets beat up, and then Ray's music hits, and he sends Santo packing. And so they announce next week it is Ray versus Santos Escobar on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. We had uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne beating Pretty Deadly, another tag tournament qualifier. And uh, it's a good match. It's all right. Double burning hammer finish. Got the win. I, 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 it was, it was uh, Pretty Deadly. Um, I mean, there was a big gap watching it. It's like Bait and oh. Dunn are like really good. And That's going to be de- like that for most Bait and Dunn matches. No, but, it, but Pretty Deadly, like you watch their timing and everything. It's it's not, it's 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 a different level down from most of the people in WWE. Um, you know, it's, you know, they're just, it's like they're above Miz, but it's like they're they're closer to Miz than pretty much almost everyone on the roster. Then the main event was Bailey and Dakota Kai, and all three of Damage Control are outside, and the finish was just preposterously stupid. So all three of Damage Control hit the ring. There's five people in the ring. Bailey starts attacking them. Because she's hitting them and they're not hitting her, the rest just standing there. Yeah. And finally, one of them gets their hands on Bailey, and then he calls for the bell. It's so stupid. Yeah. So they're quadruple teaming her. Naomi runs down to make the save. She gets her ass kicked. And then Kyrie, Asuka, and Dakota all hold Bailey so Io could do a moonsault. But they're like totally rushed for time. So Io runs up there, doesn't even look. She just jumps to get the move in before they go off the air. She lands right on Bailey's face. And we are. What, two and a half weeks away from Mania? How many weeks do we have left? Um, three? Two and a half? See, it's the... We got three. Three weeks. Yeah. I hope Bailey's okay by Mania. Yeah. She got her face smashed by this moonsault. Mm-hmm. And you could tell that EO checked on her immediately. What, 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 is it, anything happened to Asuka? I didn't see anything with Asuka. Okay, I, I only cause, saw... Because she wasn't at... I didn't. I didn't get the results of tonight's show yet, but I know that last night's she was in the last night's house show. Oh man, yeah. Well, hopefully everyone's all right. But this was uh, it's pretty scary there at the end. So next week they did announce this is the card for SmackDown. Roman and Cody will have a face to face. We have got Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory in a qualifying match. Street Profits versus Authors of Pain in a qualifying match. Ray versus Santos, and EO Sky will face Naomi. So that's the lineup for next week's show. No Dwayne. Nope. No Rock advertised, but that could always change. Yeah. So we had the uh, the Collision show, which, man, oh, man, Brian Danielson and Shibata in the opener. It was really good. God, what a great match. Did you see Commander in uh, Takeshita? I did. Yeah, it was really good, too. That was. I really liked Rampage this week. That Rampage had a lot of good wrestling, but that uh, 
Yeah, that match, man. I was talking about another show today. Like the thing with those two guys is, there are guys in this business like those two, and Kenny Omega, and Will Ospreay, and and others where they're so athletic that like anything they can imagine, they just go out there and do. <laughs> Which like for most people, you can come up with the cool things. Where it's like I couldn't actually do that, but it'd be cool if somebody could. Like, when they did that double springboard into a destroyer in that match with Takesha. That was unbelievable. I was like, that's like something that you would you would dream up, but you didn't think anyone could actually do. And, like, that whole match was just a bunch of shit. They were like, hey, you want to do this? Sure, let's do it. And they went out and did it. It was crazy. It was, but, it was, it was, very, impre- it was a very impressive match. Um, yeah, but, I mean, the thing is, is that, like, you know, Commander, it's like he's great, but he does have no credibility. Well, that's a lot of people, actually, in AEW. I know. Because they have so many people, yeah. and certain people they will not beat, and that means that everyone else has to be but, beaten. But, but Commander, they they will routinely beat. Yes. I don't know why. Well, he's small. And, There's a lot of want, small they, guys you can beat. But they want, but they want, him, on, they want him on TV because he's so freaking good. I mean, he was supposed to get beat by, by Pac on, on Collision, but he got hurt in this match. Which was what? What? What did he get hurt with, you know? Uh, no, I don't know. Mm. I just know that he got hurt in this match. Well, we had Danielson and Shibata, which was a great match. And, uh... Shibata, sh- this was the best Shibata match I think I've seen in, since the Okada match. And he's been gone since November. Yeah, no, but I mean, his... But Danielson's, like, just the perfect opponent for him anyway. But it's like, he, he was, like, doing this, like, uh... Just, like, the the quickness and crispness of him going into, like, these different wrestling moves was really something to see. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I very much enjoyed that match. I thought it was a really super match. It was everything you would expect. Great grappling, striking, beating the hell out of each other. You know, the other thing that makes Brian Danielson so great is, you know, he did stay away from Shibata's head. But if you watch that match, you have to look so close to see that he did. I mean, like, he was doing the, the slaps to the face, but he was actually hitting the... Well, yeah, both of them. You could see all the bruising right around here. There were two spots in this match. There was, and actually, they were both drop kicks in the corner, where I think they both hit each other in the head once. But other than that, it was all, you know, hitting hard in safe places. So, this was a great match. They yeah. shook hands afterwards, hugged, bowed to each other. It was great. We had Julia Hart beating Trisha Dora. The steps were the loser would be banned from ringside. For the wild card match later, yeah, which was a stupid stip because the stip was supposed to be about winning the t- actual title, but Trish only cared about the wild card match, and then during the match, Julie Hart never even interfered, so it yeah. didn't matter anyway. So uh, Julia won. They announced that Tr- later. Tr- Tr- Trisha Dora has that kneeling German suplex move. That oh, from the knees. Yeah, that thing's awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool looking move. She's she's a good athlete. Like she. Um, she's another one, you know, like they could, they could do something with her. Yep. And they do on Ring of Honor. She's undefeated. I don't know. It was, uh, who was it? Yeah, it's Trisha Dora. Or no, it was, uh. No, Queen Aminata. Queen Aminata, yeah. She's the one Queen who's Aminata's undefeated. the one they're pushing. She's undefeated on Ring of Honor and only has one win ever on AEW. Yeah, but the whole thing was building her up to make a star by coming close and everything. And now she's. Now they're trying to push him. They're they're trying to push her as a star now. Then we had uh, Statlander and Willow versus Julia and Sky Blue announced for Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And uh, Harley and Zach Knight. Yep. Did a promo backstage. So what the hell happened here? Zach Knight was um, scheduled to wrestle Angelo Parker, and then he said he's not going to do it in Canada. So this was a rare example of they advertised a match and absolutely did not deliver. Yeah, I don't know what the story is on that, but but uh, yeah, yeah, he just did a. He just said, uh, said not in Canada. Well, so then we had um, Daniel Garcia versus Lee Moriarty, and uh, it was a good match. I don't know why it took place, but it was a good match. And then just, just don't want to give Daniel Garcia. He one. just got to win. Yeah. There was no angle afterwards. There was no promo afterwards. No, just to to give Daniel Garcia a win. The show was weird, though, because it was like, 
the crowd was pretty good in Danielson Shibata. And in fact, you could see the crowd was like pretty smart in the sense of like they they understood that even though like they they really understood that Danielson Shibata and what it meant because when the match started before they'd even touched, it was the crowd was just like going crazy, you know, like with this like this is awesome and stuff like before they even touched and then they were that whole match but the rest of the show the crowd was you know pretty sluggish you know like um you know it's like the, the the you know like and really the rest of the matches it, it never really felt hot at all and kind of like um garcia and moriarty would be like one of those things because because they wrestled very well but it just didn't really seem like the crowd was into that match well the crowd needs something to get into I mean, this was just a match on television. I mean, there was no real story going in. There was no story going out. It was just a match is what it was. Yeah. We had x-rays of Darby's broken foot. They showed the clip. So, so he did a flip dive and land on his feet? He uh, he broke it, it coming off the top rope two minutes in. Yeah. And then they uh, worked the rest of the match. They did the pilmanized ankle spot. And so they can say that he broke his foot because he did. But it wasn't because of that. But he is out of Everest. No Mount Everest for this year? No, nope, but he will try again next year. Broken foot's a bitch, though, too. It's, Three broken bones. That's, 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 that's the, you know, he'll, he's going to be out for a while for that one. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that, you know, like the move that he did it on, not that it was a routine move, but on the Darby Allen scale, you know, it's actually pretty safe. And he just does all that crazy stuff that he, doesn't get hurt on although he he's gonna that guy's gonna be hurting bad you know like it's you can't do what he does and not end up hurting bad we had Pac versus aaron solo which of course Pac won hit the uh black arrow and then put on the brutalizer for the submission yeah quick match cut a promo saying tony i warned you the bastard was back and looking for trouble was not talking about this guy here didn't have him in mind i am looking for trouble so find me somewhere i will find it myself then uh, Daniel Bryan did a promo. Brian Danielson talked about gratitude, said he was grateful for wrestling Shibata. Said they were both told years ago they would never wrestle again. They came out tonight. They fought like hell. Grateful he had a match with Osprey at Dynasty. But Will said when he got in the ring, it was live or die, and he didn't plan on dying. And Brian said, that told me you can't walk in my shoes. He's never been able to walk in my shoes or Shibata's shoes because we were told we'd never wrestle again. We have been on death's door, he said, because of this. And Osprey was not ready for what he was going to bring. Now, o- Osprey's been on a different kind of death store too. Osprey had that uh, that uh, was it his kidneys. What did he have just a few months ago, where he was really, really sick? Yeah, he was really sick, and he had um, what was the other thing? The um, he had he had some major freaking depression too. Yeah, that that was a couple of years back when he had the depression. It was during the pandemic. But yeah, he had that that kidney thing for for a while. That was he came back fairly quick from it. But yeah, now he, Osprey's had his, uh, his, you know, I mean, he's had regular injuries, of course, but everyone has those. But he's been on, you know, I don't want to say death's door, but you know, he's he's had his scare, he's had his scary moments too. We had Claudio Castagnoli and Lance Archer, which went to a rare DQ when the Righteous hit the ring. And Danielson ran down to make the save. He got laid out. Shibata ran down with a chair, cleared the ring. So it appears we have a six-man coming. That's what it would appear. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah. It, um, I guess they could do that on, on collision maybe on the 30th or something. Yeah. Yeah. Although, um, they're, they're, in, they're, um, they're in Mexico on the 29th. Well, that would be cutting it pretty close. Well, you could do it. You can do Mexico and then get to, uh, where's the 30th? Canada? Isn't it London, Ontario? Oh, my God. It's a trip. Yeah. It can be done. Lexi's with Cool Hand, and Cool Hand wants to fight Zach anyway, and she says, no, they, they're they baiting you in. That's what they want you to do. So if you go looking for a fight tonight, you got to do it without me. And he's caught off guard, but then he goes, all right, well, let's go. So he left, even though his mother was in the crowd, and he was 90 minutes from where he grew up, and his friends and family were there, and he walked out? Yeah. Now they're all going to hate Ruby. Yeah, he didn't even, he didn't, he didn't, I don't think he even worked like a dark match or anything. No, can you imagine? Yeah. He couldn't let that guy just beat Zach or 
whatever on that show? No. Kyle O'Reilly beat Brian Keith. Kyle looked good, except, man, his uh, his he right arm is very atrophied. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of heat. Um, but, yeah, so he wrestled well. Yeah. They mentioned Mark Coleman. Put over Mark Coleman. I hope, I hope, and it could go either way, you know, whether it's AEW or WWE. I hope the next group that's in Ohio uh, brings him out to, the, to one of the shows and introduces him. He is back in the hospital, though, pneumonia. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. actually he was actually released from the hospital, went home. All of a sudden, his back. chest and arms didn't feel good. Went back in, and they diagnosed him with pneumonia, and he was back in the hospital. So, I was amazed he was out of the hospital that quick. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, he, had, he was burned, smoke inhalation. Man, uh, wish the best for him. Kyle got the win with the arm bar, and uh, he's on his road back. That's what this was. Bizarre interview with Dion and Thunder Rosa. Thunder said the two of them were fighting for TV time. Well, they are. <laughs> what? They are fighting for TV what? time. <laughs> they did. It did. It did. It came off to me that like Thunder's going to turn on her. Ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Deanna needs to be a heel. Tony and uh, Mariah need to be baby faces. Thunder, it doesn't matter. But man, God, Tony and and uh, Mariah—they were just so ridiculously over on the Rampage show, teaming together. <laughs> they just had the place was going nuts for them, and then you know they bring out Deanna. Gets booed. Dion introduces, uh, you know, Thunder. They get booed. Like, you're just, you're killing everybody by having them, these baby faces facing Tony and Mariah. But that's what they're doing. Carly Bravo. Is it Carly Bravo? Carly Bravo. Carly Bravo and Sean Dean versus Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black. My God, this match. God. It wasn't Malachi Black. It was Buddy Matthews. Buddy Matthews. and, and, And Brody King. Brody King. Yeah. Dude. Could you have a match and get people over less? Like, oh boy. okay. So, so here's the deal. It's like, yeah, I mean, but so, so the so last week they had the infantry do the promo with FTR. So I figured infantry and FTR were going to face each other first round of the tournament. Well, instead they're facing each other second round of the tournament. Um, the infantry did very well on their promo. Both both guys, both Carly uh, Bravo and Sean Dean. So this match with Buddy and Brody King, the idea was to introduce them to the main roster and get them over. And in fact, they did win the match, but they did not get over because it was like they got, except for like one hot tag by Sean Dean, they got like no offense in at all in a match that they should have gotten. I'm not saying that they even needed to get 50% 50% of the offense in, but they absolutely need to get at least 40%. I mean, the, to, to make this, because it's like the idea is, is they're going against FTR, I believe next week, but whenever the match is, they're going against FTR in the next round of the tournament. And now people see them as just, you know, guys that just got sm- slaughtered, but fluked in because Mark Briscoe interfered. And I didn't mind Mark Briscoe interfering, giving them the win as long as they got a lot of offense and looked competitive, got some near fall, shocked people, and then they end up getting a fluke win. So the you know there's like a bitch there, and they can be okay with it. And plus, Mark Brisk goes in the feud with House of Black, so it really does make sense that way. But, man, the layout of this match, it, it, it did them no good. I mean, like, you talk about, like, putting people over by not putting them over. This is like the textbook example of it. It's like the, uh, you know, I was I, I, I know what they, what they were trying to do, and it's like, boy, did this fail. I don't think they were actually trying to do that. Like, well, no, well, come no, on. The, the company was trying to, but the some of the participants, I don't know that they were. God, they just destroyed them, destroyed them, destroyed them, destroyed them. There was a hot tag. They got, the dude got destroyed. And then, not only that... What was the purpose then? Buddy hit Dean with a curb stomp in the ring, lifted him up at two. Yep. Like, he had him beat, but he lifted him up at two. Yep. And then Mark Briscoe interfered, threw a chair at Buddy, and Sean Dean crawled over and pinned him. Yeah. I mean, you could not have made them look worse. 
and getting Especially, a win than they did here. Yep, you could not. And now they got now they're supposed to wrestle FTR in a, in a tournament match. Then we had Adam Copeland coming out, box with Spike written on it, and uh, he's just cheered like crazy. They absolutely love him. And then he mentions his hometown of Toronto, and they start booing. And he's like, come on, that's my hometown. They still booed. Mm -hmm. He could not catch a win. So he cut a promo. On Christian, he said, this was the exact opposite of what you usually see. I'm not talking to Christian. I'm talking to Jay Riso. This time he goes, I'm not talking to Jay. That guy's dead. I'm talking to Christian. We're going to uh, we're gonna fight. He says, I failed at World's End. I don't like repeated failure. But I came back only to have Christian lay me out with a concerto. When I was out of action... Somebody called to remind me of who I was. And he said, I took cues from two guys. The guy who created Barbie, the guy who created Janice. Barbie was Mick Foley's barbed wire bat from the 90s. And Janice would be, he, so he, he talked Abyss. to uh, Abyss, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chris Park. Yep. Joe Park. Chris Park is his real name. Was it? Yeah. Chris Park is his name. I know, but I think his, his gimmick name was Joe Park, Joseph Park. He he was Joseph Parks when he was yes. when, he, when he was doing the the, the non gimmick yeah yeah so anyway he's got his own uh, creation which is Spike black two by four covered in nails and he said he was going to send Christian to the hospital he was going to make him say the two words that would ensure his daughters could never look him in the eyes again I quit he screamed which was stupid because Foley did that in the nineties that's what cost him his I quit match with The Rock yeah but anyway. A hell of a go-home promo, I would say. And I think that show's going to do pretty well, at least in terms of attendance. And, well, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they're, they're, they're at, they're at uh, 56, 5,700 by right now. Um, so by AEW standards, it's good. I don't know, you know, rating, we'll see. Obviously, you know, the Wednesday rating, to me, was a big disappointment. Big, big disappointment. But, uh, you know, just what it is, I think, uh, you know, I mean... People are prioritizing WWE right now. It's mania season, and they got a lot going on. And uh, there may, there's only so many hours a day, and and you know, I mean, there's other things too. I mean, like going to get Survivor doesn't help either. Um, you know, NBA obviously, but the NBA has been there every week. That's nothing new. Well, I think if you look at the ratings pattern, the biggest mistake they made was if you're going to bring her out at the beginning of the show, she should have made it abundantly clear. I'll be there I'm, in the main event. I'll be I'm, watching that I'm match watch, from ringside. I'm, I'm watching the main event. Yep. Yes. Something. Like, yeah. it was It was very clear from that ratings pattern that nobody knew she was coming out a second time. They all thought she came out and she was leaving, and, uh, and that was there it. Was a, there was a pickup at the, at the very end. But, man, that, uh, you know, but look, Willow Nightingale and, and Riho is not a main event. It's just not, and it's nothing against well, them. Well, it's not a main event, but it can be a main event if you make it clear that they're having a match that Mercedes is going to be ringside watching. Maybe. That's all you I, need. It's, it's still not a main event. There's main eventers and there's non-main eventers, and you got to know the difference. And uh, sometimes I don't think people know the difference. It's not that these people, you know, one of the things that, that a lot of people, I, I it's, it's just a weird analogy, but it's not completely wrong. Um this is when I was actually in working for the Oakland Tribune. So this is early eighties. Eddie Einhorn, who who ran a wrestling promotion, had made a famous quote at the time, and it was you know like I think there was like some baseball unrest because he was the owner of the White Sox, and he also was a, a failed wrestling promoter. Um, and he said, and this is also why he was a failed wrestling promoter. Although actually he's a pretty nice guy and is a observer reader and all that for years and years and years and very nice to me and all that but the quote was the difference between um baseball and wrestling is is that in wrestling if one of these guys you know wants to start a union or something like that all we got to do is get some uh, uh bleach and bleach his hair and we got another one and it's like well that's not the case that's the problem you just think they're all interchangeable and these there's there's main event talent and i mean and there's very good great exciting undercard talent but they're not main event talent and you have to know the difference and if you don't you're going to be putting people who are not main event talent in main events and it's not going to work it's just that's just how it is i mean and reho 
You know, I mean, she always gets over to the live crowd. She's a great worker, but she's not main event talent. Now she, I'm not saying she could never be, but, I mean, to be, she'd have to be pushed and pushed and pushed. And Willow the same way. I mean, Willow's had, you know, some pushes and non-pushes and things like that, but she's not main event talent either. I mean, as soon as they did that show and they announced that as the main event, I was like, they're not going to keep people till the end with this with this match. And even, I mean, even if they had Mercedes out there, maybe that would have helped a little more, you know, but they're not main event talent. Well, on that note, everybody, we've got to wrap it up for today. The New Observer's up on the front page, back issue as well. And Dave and Garrett were up this weekend to talk uh, everything on Friday night. We've got uh, a bunch of shows over the weekend, a bunch of shows coming up over next week. And Dave and I will be back on Monday night talking the Raw fallout and plenty more. So that's it, everybody. We'll talk to you again after a while.